afar upon a lonely eider down While I dream of rats and tar within my burrow in the ground Infernal gaping scar of boiling mud and thundering sound They won't sing of this forsaken pawn of war Hoist the flags, hold the lines, lessons ever lost in time Now we sing for you Get to the 
chopper is our final director. I'm the shooter guy, shooter guy. Laws of physics and logic need not apply. Yeah, I'm the shooter guy, shooter guy. As long as I have my wall, I will never die. Cause I'm the shooter guy, shooter guy. I'm a walking, talking cliche, this I can't deny. Yeah, I'm the shooter guy, shooter guy. As long as I got my wall, I will never die. It's so ghetto, ghetto. Middle class white kids rapping. It's so ghetto, ghetto. Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to game number one between Region Phoenix and Two Heroes, One Fountain. I almost stumbled over my tongue and couldn't actually get like the first part of that sentence, but you know what? I bet you know what you're talking about because you are all smart, intelligent, and amazing people. We do go ahead and have um, Region Phoenix losing the coin flip and ending up getting saddled with map pick. They do pick Volskaya Industries or Volskaya Foundry, depending on who you listen to. We do have some bands. You can see them on the screen. It looks like we're getting into draft right about now. The Funk Soul map. Check it out now. <laughs> oh, look at me over my co-casting position. Whoop! I have magic. I have magical powers. I can move on the screen. You all are, you all are very impressed. We will never forget. Take the plunge. So we do have first band coming out of the side of two heroes, one fountain. Um, you can tell that because they didn't get map pick, and that's the way that works. That's the way that uh, the cookie crumbles. That's okay, so I want a cookie. Why can't I have a cookie? Boop. Where is my... Did I do a dumb again? Or is it not on the screen? Why is that so high? I, 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 I'm confusing myself. No big deal. I'm just I'm just giving myself a confusion. 
So we do go ahead and have uh, Chromie being banned out, first of all. I like this. I like Chromie being removed. This area has a lot of very, very big areas you have to control. And so a lot of the, like, um, having, like, a Zagara or something that hits an area, like a Jaina, you can just move out of it. I mean, it's enough that you can avoid a lot of that. But Chromie slowing sand hits, like, half or 70% of the total space. So it's very, very, very powerful. Do go ahead and have the Junkrat. The Jukrat. Um, also, being able to put those onto the spot, it's hard to move off of them and also stay on the position. Uh, Johanna, not surprised. If you don't have first pick, if you don't have first pick, you ban Johanna. That's just what happens. Are we going to see Rhaegar? Don't see Rhaegar as high a priority anymore. He's good, don't get me wrong, but so is Malfurion. So is Stukov. So is Brightwing. So is Anduin. Because you can't win without Anduin. It's in the name. We do have the Rhaegar band out. Oh, old habits die hard. I don't know why where that voice is coming from, but I'm having a good time, and that's all that matters. So here we have the first pick. Picks are always more interesting than bands. I'm like, okay, so um, obviously big heals not coming out. We don't have an overpowered tank, but what I'm more interested in is what we have, and we do have the Stukov. I will show you a monster. I still think what he says, he says victory above all. Because I was totally talking about over him because I'm rude. How is everyone today? How are all of your faces? Everyone, I care about every face in the Nexus. So Stukov coming back. Are we going to... Uh, we do have Lucio. I was, I was wondering if they want to go ahead and come back with a healer. Um, Sonya being picked very, very, very early. Surprising. I got so confused, Wanda Bird. I was like, wait, Storm? Is Storm also playing? What what Storm match is happening right now? And I started having my like brain started going because I didn't think there were any Storm event matches happening tonight. And then I'm like, wait, Storm is the name of a player? Uh, Greek Fire, I 10,000% agree with you. When I saw the patch notes, I'm like, oh, Moff Furion is going to become one of the top tier. I still think he's one of the top tier he uh, healers, but you just don't see him very much. His numbers are bonkers insane. Oh, good, Mulby. Mulby's here for the long haul. Glad to see that, hear that, smell that. Take the plunge. You have the Lee Mingers. The Ming Li. And by I say we have the Ming Li, I mean the Ming Li is something we don't have, and it is banned from being had. It's basically the exact opposite of what I said, because I'm a great caster. We have Volskai. Oh. Oh. I actually got wrecked by a Sergeant Hammer in Quick Match because I actually played Quick Match. What is wrong with me? Why the hell am I playing Quick Match? I don't know. Don't know. Not me. Oh, interesting. Sir Shane Train coming out and saying we have a Deathwing in our in our future. It isn't banned, so it's definitely possible. But the Tychus comes in, Tychus definitely, especially with Bigger They Are, can mess up a Deathwing. Bigger They Are isn't super effective against, like, a Garage, but against Deathwing, it really, really, really hurts you. We do have the Arrow, arrow coming out with the Blaze. So stuns for days with the Tychus standing in the sidelines. Definitely something we could be looking for. Plus, I just talk about, like, Odin is amazing at holding that point. Almost as good as he is on Shrines. So yeah, Deathwing does not come out. I'm not saying that that means Sir Shane Twain was wrong. It could also very easily be that they saw the Tychus and were like, okay, no. Abort, abort, abort. There is Storm coming out. Take the plunge. Sorry, I've got my own theme song stuck in my head. I need to record my theme song. I actually made a battle rap all about myself, all about me. So Tracer coming in, very, very interesting. We'll be able to really, really, really... That's Tracer's a really good pick here. Now, obviously, you can cocoon the Tracer, which is a good counter pick. But other than that, there's it's very, very hard for a Nubrak to actually get these stuns on the Tracer. She's too maneuverable. Um, similarly, Stukov, a lot of his stuff is stationary. So she's going to be able to run in and do a lot of harassment on the Hanzo. Hanzo can't go auto-attack build in order to kind of mess with that. But you know what? Enough, we're going to the game. I'll get the prediction up. See you guys in two seconds. And blah, 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 blah.
Leonidas drops the stun and drops the full ult. Oh my goodness, look at the health bars. It's a quad kill. King should find the kill. Lunara will clean up that fight. Oh my god, I can't believe it. It is going to be Soul Shield. You gotta be kidding me. And Rana takes the 3v1, gets one, looking for the second. Crispy is popping off. Crispy. Like that Blizzard make connect with four oh, people. Oh, Lady Ronin. Oh my goodness, what a chat. That was really good. All right, and the intro went on for exactly as long as it needed to. Huzzah! Love to see it. We do go ahead and get into the game here right about now. Oh, look at my ugly... You guys can all see what happens when I actually play the game. I'm not playing it, though. I'm observing. Get out of here. No one wants to see that. We do go ahead and have um, Aria coming in on the Sonya. We do have D Daribo coming in on Tracer. Dub C is going to be on Tychus. We do have Arrow on the Blaze. And then Recycic is going to be running around on Lucio. That is your blue team coming out here from the gates right now. Region Phoenix on the other side coming in on Orange. We do go and have Northern Touch is going to be on the Anubarak. Lude Panda floppity floppity on the um, Falstead. We do have Storm with the Storm Bow playing Hanzo. We do go and have Dropping dropping BB. It's going to be on the uh, Stuka. And who did I not talk about? US Maps is on the Hogger. More bones to gnaw on. New Habits is coming out for Blaze. We do go ahead and have Simple Geometry and Gathering Storm. There's a nice stun onto Arrow, but Arrow is not necessarily who he wants to do the dive on, so they don't. We do go ahead and have our offlaners going to the offlane. Imagine that. I know. Crazy stuff. This Maps goes in, throws in some nice grenaders. Grenaders! Oh, it looks like Derry Bow took quite a bit of damage coming up here. I talked about how Tracer's gonna be really good at this back line, but um, not when she's at half health. Uh, the full five man here in the middle for the time being, but nice double stun coming out of the new barack. Gonna be going in there, um, jumping back and forth. We are at two stacks from Civil Geometry so far. That is 10% done. Easy math there. Hanzo is moving in to go ahead and try and take out this camp. Dropping BB. I love that name. I love dropping like BB so much. There's Stukov with his massive, massive, meaty um, attacks. How much does he actually do? Uh, does a 293 damage per basic attack at level 3? If we actually see a Leoric, because someone was saying that Leoric's auto attacks are stronger. Uh, and some people were saying it was only their third. I'm not sure which is true. Do go and have the lovely toy being picked up. Dari Bo comes up and says, Oh, I wanted that. Dar Tr Tracer seems a lot like the character that would be at the like pre preschool and just does not want anyone else to have fun. Every single time someone's playing with a toy, they come over and try and take it away. That's just the way Tracer like seems to me. Maybe that's unfair. Or maybe that's entirely too fair. Northern Touch looking for a dive in. The only arrow in the area to be de dove upon. Not really who they want. We've redesigned our three glove protector for combat in the Nexus. So we do have this unlocking. We do go ahead and have the paper airplane camps, as Sparhawk likes to call them, coming out on the side of the blue. Uh, Stukov and Lude Panda moving over here to go ahead and pick up their own. Definitely a thing we can see in the near and not too distant future. Yes, both of those words. U.S. maps not having a lot of rage. I do like that we have the battle between the rage characters, but right now, um, Arya having a lot, lot more rage to play with. Enough arrow coming and throwing out some things. Right now, the blue team does control the point. Arrow trying not to leave it for too long. Tracer not down here with the team. They may be driven off before too long. Um, trying to get up to level 7 because their opponents actually managed to do that. Level 7 is online, but Tracer is still not here yet. A lot of damage. Silence coming down on Arrow. Arrow goes back. Big ol' loot horde goes ahead and boops him to the one side, but big ol' uh, armor does go ahead and protect him. 
And we do go ahead and have the orange team going ahead and getting that uh, progress. As everyone knows, um, it does not matter how much progress you have. This is not Braxis. Whoever gets 100% gets the protector, and whoever doesn't does not. A lot of damage, and we do go in our first blood. Silence came down, just was not able, um, was slowed down, was trying to get out of there. We do go in have the battle of the turrets. The turrets going in and blasting back and forth. They're still fighting for this, even without their blaze. Uh, they know blaze will come back. There is a stun onto Lucio. Um, Sonya tries to go forward, but goes forward right onto the silence and goes ahead and backs off. Blaze is back up. We're at 70%. Only about, uh, 15 seconds until it's complete. Blaze is nearly here. Oh, but no healing happened for Arya. And they aren't able to get back on there in time. We do go and have the healer going in there, so this could be a great, great opportunity to invade. And yeah, they're just... They're charging the wrong, um, fort. A little bit late there. A uh, little misannounced lady. What is her name? I feel like I should know her name. Alright, they're starting to move in right now. Quite a bit of damage coming in. One of the towers is gone. They are having to back off, only having gotten a tower. There was not a concentrated push. The actual rest of the team went down here below. Um, is trying to do damage, but like, basically went into behind this fort in order to give, like, obscurity. And then half the team went down this way. So that with, they could see the protector on the map, they couldn't see the rest of the team, so they went north to respond to the protector. And while that was being done, they moved south. They did go and get the wall and one of the towers, almost so the second tower. The extent of the protector's power. Impressive. Pr protector is picked up. U.S. maps is moving up here in the middle. Here is Northern Touch. Sonya and Tracer are not here, so they're just going to go ahead and give up that healing camp. Both teams are unlocking level 10 on the side of uh, the fountains. We do go and have Cocoon, Shockwave, Dragon Zero, Mighty Gust, and Flailing Swipe. On the side of um, the Regeners, we do go and have Bunker Drop, Pulse Rounds, High Five, Commandeer Odin, and Sonya does know. It's funny. I kept moving down, and then I moved down to the fifth one, and nothing happened. And I thought, oh my gosh, did I miss one? No, Sonya just hasn't picked yet. Both teams are posturing around, waiting to go and move in. Both teams are moving back and forth. Trying to move in. We do go and have Hogger in the side lane, which means Sonya is actually here. Sonya did eventually settle on Leap. So that's a great engage if they can find a target. It does look like they're thinking about invading their opponents. Here comes US Maps. I'm surprised they didn't go for that. Like the Sonya Spear into stun, followed up by the Arrow Spear, or the Arrow Charge. I feel I could have done major damage, but they decided not to go for it. Granted, I'm also just a little bit bloodthirsty. A new terminal will be ready shortly. Storm is coming out of the bushes. There's the charge. Northern touches uh, big old bomb. There comes Sonya coming in. They're looking for something. I'm surprised they're actually going for a new Barack of all. Um, has not committed any of their R's, except for Tracers. Uh, Malby, so Sonya actually has to use it before I can talk about it? I'm not going to make Sonya's just for no reason. Secure it to activate the protector. 
Looks like Dub C is moving up here. Dub C 613. Is that an area code? What is 613? Someone someone find out what that stands for. Quick, someone Google what area code is 613. For those of you that are curious, I grew up in the 918 area code. All right, we do have quite a bit of damage coming out of the arrow. Big old root coming in. We do go and have the counter kill. Or not the counter kill. Um, well, okay, there's the counter kill. I was just ahead of myself. I'm a future psychic. We do go and have Odin is popped. They're moving in here. Unstoppable Hogger, but Hogger is bouncing the wrong direction, trying to get out of here, and will not. Ends up just in the middle of nowhere. Northern Touch taking a lot of damage. It is four versus four right now. They have lost their tank, but their opposing side has lost their healer. So both very, very critical people to lose. Um, Sonya going in, doing a spin to win. US maps down to about 400 health. We do go to have a side chick running around. Bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Um, Northern Touch looking extremely low. Tiger's trying to get this, but will not get it. US maps comes around, tries to go and smash people. We do go and have the second protector coming out in favor of Regen Phoenix. Wow, Maestro is trolling me in my own chat? Unacceptable. Alright, Protector does go to the side of Region Phoenix this time. They're gonna go ahead and run around and take out front walls. So that they're not gonna commit to a fort because they don't think they can actually get it. But meanwhile, once again in a reversal of what they did before. Um, the opposing team does move up here. Starts doing press to the top board. Tracer and Sonya are here. Sonya may have to oh, to get out of here. And indeed she does. Oh, but there's the dragon arrow. Says, hey, I can stun from a distance too. Oh, arrow tries. Arrow ran in there. Stun storm, but not quite fast enough. There is the Sonya sword on the ground. So we're up to four kills in favor of uh, two heroes, one fountain. Only one answering kill against that Stukov coming out of region Phoenix. What about Phoenix? You go ahead and get a free uh, turret over to the side of one fountain. Arrow does come in, but a nice disengage from Loon Panda goes ahead and moves back. And there is the oh! Does go in and catch Northern Touch, but only Northern Touch. Dropping BB, taking a lot of damage. Here they come. They're looking in. They get Stukov. They're looking for more. They're always looking for more. Unstoppable just come out of Northern Touch. Saves them, but that is a second kill coming out of region. And Arrow gets the double stun. Uh, Storm goes ahead and flips back, but US Maps is on the aggression. Looking through here, we do have Dari Bo has to run back. Uh, Tracer looking in, goes go ahead and get the bomb. Barely missed with that bomb. There we have a amazing, or not so amazing, EU Arrow coming out. To go and have a region phoenix go move up here take the region camp because honestly who i, I kind of feel like it should be a penalty for the non-region team to get the region camp like they should have to pay a um like licensing fee to hold that item Oh, it does look like Sonya's in quite a bit of trouble. But there comes the Blaze. Blaze goes in and gets the stun. Bunker comes down or protects Sonya. Northern Touch taking a good bit of damage. This is a nice turnaround. I don't think they'll get anyone, but they definitely saved the Sonya. 
Once again, though, not a lot of um, R buttons committed. You have Sonya on cooldown from the lead, and then Bunker was down. Um, on the other side, Hanzo did use that arrow. Storm moving on down. Moving on down. It's time, heroes. Control the terminal and bring in the protector. Here comes the other team. A big old fight here. This is four versus five. Tracer is nearby, but is not actually here. And there she is. Is moving in. Northern Tide takes a good bit of damage. Big old, big old slow, and we're not having any, any movement. Sonya does go down. Can't even use her buttons. And there goes that, but they aren't actually... Never mind. They do pick it up. Blue Panda gets that, and Lucio gives his life. That is kill number five and six, going to the side of two heroes, one fountain. Silence coming down on the blaze. Is this going to be kill number seven? Lucky number seven? Nope. Not... It does look like that uh, Two Heroes One Fountain is not getting lucky just yet. To go ahead and have our orange team moving to the bottom of the map. Dropping B, B, B going to be dropping down and turning this point orange. Loot Panda is getting collapsed upon up here. That, that is a third kill. We have half as many kills on the side of region as we do for two heroes but we are going to have a answering port coming down the top lane arrow almost gets take oh my god okay i have seven thousand questions falstead doesn't do a uh, poison damage so how did falstead kill him that long after the fight had concluded Hello, hello. Thank you very much, Bankai. I appreciate the raiders. We are in game number one between Region Phoenix and Two Heroes, One Fountain. Um, right now, we do go ahead and have Two Heroes, One Fountain occupying the bottom four, trying to get Volskaya. I know you guys just watched Volskaya uh, map for Bankai because I was like looking in. I was waiting for Bankai to explain to me how to count to 100, but he never did. Very offended. Blue team has taken control of a protector. All right, we do have the protector moving up. The entire mid lane is cleaned up. They are moving back because uh, Tychus is scary. Blaze is back on his feet, and they are moving in here. A lot of damage here. The rest of the team is not here to help out. False Dead is on the other end of the map. Waiting to try and kill someone without being there again, apparently. Oh, thank you very much, Greek. I was so confused. I was like, how the... I was legit wondering if, like, there was a Nazebo talent that Tychus could... Or that Falsat could get. And I would do the protector sitting here. Being a nice wall of the way. I mean, this actually is effective. The mi Never mind. I thought the minions would attack the protector. They don't. Minions are lazy. Yeah, I was about to brag on that play and it didn't do anything. So we do have one uh, fort apiece coming out of both of these teams. We are at level 20. We do go and have fortified bunker. Get stuffed. Uh, Summer Anthem, Big Red Button, and Ariat Crater coming out of the side of Region Phoenix. Rewind, no control, play of the game, Wind Tunnel and Controlled Chaos coming out of the side of Two Heroes, One Fountain. There we have the Wind Tunnel coming out. Um, we do have Sonya coming in there, so Ariat Crater to zone, but this is picked up, but can they actually pick up the Healing Beacon? And fall, uh, Hogger does not stop. Hogger goes ahead and gets his oh, recite check, barely gets out there. Great time. And we do go ahead and have the Sonya taken out, as well as the Lucio. Blaze is going to go as well. That is a 3 4 nothing kill in favor of two heroes, one fountain. And Loot Panda is leading the attack. We are second forward of the game going against the might of two heroes, one fountain. That's one more fountain than exists at this part of the map because that is destroyinated. I 
that we do have Tracer coming over here. I guess to push this top lane. They see they've got a little bit, and they're like, well, we don't, we can't really fight them, so let's go and try and get counterbalance on the other. I don't know that she'll actually get this fort, but, or this keep. This fort will definitely fall to uh, two heroes, one fountain. Hogger does move back in order to clear this out. Um, is down to about 6,400 health. And we do go and have mercenary camps being picked up for every team. Every team on the map, we're getting their own personal mercenary camp. Coming with a big old paintbrush and saying, you know what? I'm going to redo your paint job. I'm starting up an excess terminal. All right, I like this positioning. They are moving down here. Um, Blaze may not want to be there anymore. Like, this is cool positioning. They do go and just try and trade out structures. Their opponents are up top, taking this down. So yeah, there's 32 seconds. They are not really able to get much done. Arrow in the bushes. Someone's going to scout this. Someone's trick. And yep. I was going to say, I like the positioning of it. Oh, there is a great in a arrow. Kachi comes out and he hits three people, which is why it's not a you, because I'm changing the vernacular. Oh, Hog Wild comes out, goes ahead and locks a people down. We do have Sony in the middle of the entire team. Not going to be able to hold that up. And that is a triple kill coming out of the side of uh, two heroes, one fountain. Big old damage comes through. Tracer went ahead and recalled. But came, the problem is you had to go back to where you were just were. And, and the entire enemy was standing right there being like, Hi! I totally just waved even though you couldn't see me. Because I am good at remembering when my camera is on. I just realized my NGS watermark is not up because I deleted it because I'm a scrub. But it does look like this game is going to be going the way of the dodo in just a second. Four does go down and game number one does go in favor of two heroes, one fountain. I'm getting slightly ahead of myself. There we go. I'm like, don't make me a liar. Please, 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 please. Idiot, move. I knew there was something missing. I was so confused. So, we do go ahead and have a look at the stats at the end of round number one. We do have Hanzo leading the way in damage. I used to always start with healing, but the problem is, healing doesn't really tell the whole story. Like, like Stukov did more healing, but then sometimes, like, Lucio is not a... It, it, it tells a false narrative, so I've kind of stopped doing that. Um... But we do go and have uh, 58,000 damage coming out of Hanzo, 54,000 coming out of Tychus, Lude Panda coming in third. In terms of Soak, we do have 22,000 versus 18,000. In terms of talents, we got those. Here they are. Copy them down, use them, love them. Uh, the only hero here I kind of play is Sonya. Let's go with the Whirlwind build, surprisingly enough. Oh, it's only 50 per second. I thought it was more than that. Regardless, though, I will see you for game number two momentarily.
Hello, hello, welcome to game number two. Can you dig it? Can you count it? Can you do you know? Because you should. Oh, it's up there. I'm so smart. So we do go ahead and have Arrow. Um, this looks like the same teams coming in. I always look to see if there are anything, but I do recognize all of these names. To wonder if whenever someone's like um says bb if dropping b is always like what 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 every cutesy couple out there is just confusing dropping forever i was gonna uwu uwu his name the entire game i want to be like dropping bb dropping bb i won't do it though because i respect you Stukov being the first bet. I do not blame them at all for that. Uh, Stukov was nasty. We do go to, as you see, first band coming out of the side of Region Phoenix. That does, of course, mean that this is the map pick of Two Heroes, One Fountain once again. After losing game number one, um, Region does say we still want first pick. <coughs> Excuse me. Actually, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think that uh, the first pick was had by two heroes last game, so I shouldn't say still. Miscommunicated that one to you guys. And the Anubabarak? Anubabarak? All right, Rhaegar. I'm gonna see the fur reversal, full reversal. The cost of survival is losing your edge. This is the problem. I don't have a lot to talk about when it comes to bands. Did you get rid of the Rhaegar? Now, Hogger is still really, really good. We did see Hogger come out last game. And Hogger just owns and decimates and chews up Null Camps. And Null Camps are the secret objective on this map. Um, I, I don't think it's quite the same as on, like, Hanamura, where the uh, Genji Camp is actually stronger than the actual objective. But they are still super plus good. We have the first pick coming out. Who are we going to see? What are we going to know? We do have a Recyc Chick going for the global first thing. Um, I do have to wonder if we're going to see a global strategy. Will we see False Ad coming out as well? Possibly Dahaka, although... No, we have US maps going to Sonya first and foremost. Not going for the Hogger for quick clear. Let's go with Deathbringer Sonya, but not the cute one with the helmet off. I like this helmet off version better. I'm such a good caster. <laughs> Definitely a little temper tantrum here. You're using the wrong skin! <laughs> Junkrat just came out with Storm. Does not ban that out this time. So definitely a lot of displacement. Definitely. Junkrat can basically like stop you forever um, from on the other side of the wall. It's almost as bad as Chromie. Or Ming Lee. Duko and have the Blaze coming out of Arrow one more time. And we do have uh, Sylvanas coming out of Jerry Bow. I was going to ask how to pronounce um, Aria. I, I hope I'm saying it correctly. I actually have no idea. Oh, we do have the ban. Um, we do have a healer and a tank. No offlane yet. But once again, they get rid of the Sajintama. It absolutely is, Mulby. I usually love the Nexomania skins, which is why I was I'm just all about them whenever they show up. Oh, we do have the Deathwing coming out this time. 
or coming out uh, quite literally as in band out band the cost of survival is losing your age that was stuck in my head i apologize Northern Touch is going with ETC. Interesting. He did get an extra 60 health. We do go and get dropping BB coming out of the Malfurion. Very, very recently buffed hero. We don't see him enough. I really like the new Malfurion. Someone tell, um, someone tell Bahamut. We got a Cho and we got a Gull. We're going to have, um... Arabe Arabex 613. That was just... It, it, it's Ark? Ark? Sounds like one of the Lost Vikings. And we do go ahead and have the Mulfield. That was a really, really good time to show Gull. They'd already taken both of their DPS. No, they hadn't. And Tiger's interesting. But obviously, Malthiel going to chew through does do, like, I think 4% of your overall health um, every time you get an auto win. No, it's not per auto. It puts a stacking debuff. It's actually 8%. That does 2% of your health every uh, second for 4 seconds. But if you do another auto with that 4 seconds, it just refreshes the counter. So it's not like 8% per auto. Not how it works, guys. So here we go. I'll get the bet up. Look forward to it. Leonidas drops the stun and drops the full ult. Oh my goodness, look at the health bars. It's a quad kill. Should find the kill. Lunara will clean up that fight. Oh my god, I can't believe it. It is going to be Soul Shield. You gotta be kidding me. And Rana takes the 3v1, gets one. Looking for the second. Crispy is popping off. Crispy. It's like that Blizzard make connect with four oh, people. Oh, Lady Ronin. Oh my goodness, what a chat. That was really good. All right, here we are in the actual game. We went from Volskaya to uh, Alterac, from the last to the first map in the uh, alphabet. We do going to have um, Ar Ar Ark 613 being played by uh, Cho and Gaul. By the way around, actually. We have Recycic on the bright wing. Um, Aria is going to be on the blaze. And we do have Daribo coming out with Sylvanas. We do go and get US maps at the bottom lane. They are spreading out because there is the presence of Sylvanas in the enemy team. Storm is here on the Junkrat, as well as dropping BB. Uh, where's our last person? Northern Touch is hiding from me up here on ETC. We have Lude Panda hanging out in the top lane. The apocalypse has come! We are moving down here, trying to collapse on Sonya. Definitely have picked up. US maps trying to uh, get out of here. Is going to be successful. Did not actually have any stun with them. Blaze did come out to the top lane. Blaze is going to go ahead and rush into the small field. Quite literally with a big old charge. And whoa! And Malthiel wants no part of that. Going to go ahead and ride right on out of here. Ride into the sunset, as it were. We do go ahead and get Unfurling the Shadows coming out of the Sylvanas. Uh, new Habits of the Blaze and Prog Rock from the ETC. No camp being picked up on both sides. Junkrat and dropping BB on one side. Cho and Gaul and Sylvanas. We'll be getting it from the other one. US maps, you do know that staying in that for long periods of time is bad for your health, right? <laughs> well, you're just like, I'm just going to get to the maximum slow because I can and you can't stop me. Yes, there are many bad decisions that you can choose to make that I will not be able to save you from. A lot of damage. We have Malthio coming in, trying to aggress upon this half ogre. Actually, no, that's a full ogre. I was thinking of Rexar. Oh, nice. Big ol' sleep. Um, but that's a lot of health. So we do have the Cho'Gal getting out. Any other hero would get completely decimated by that. And by decimated, I mean killed. Not 10% of the their health being removed. For those of you that are pedantic. It's 
Sylvanas is at 16 stacks of unfurling shadows. Shadows have been unfurled 16 times. I'm not supposed to win Brightwing into this. Like, Brightwing's not a bad healer, but definitely not the best. No, isn't Ariel, isn't Ana, and um, who's the other bit? Rhaegar? Granted, Rhaegar was banned. It may have been a case, I bet they had three in, so they were like, if we pick um, Ariel, it will kind of tip our hand. Anna might not have. If US maps down here does evacuate. Evacuate. Da, da, da. I'm moving here to quite a bit of damage. Meanwhile, they are going ahead. Um, the Null Camp will be cleared by the cannons and dropping BB and Storm. So it looks like the red Nulls make it a little bit more value. Here comes Lude Panda going in here. Little Angel of Deathing it up. Big, big fight to coming down here, but this is four versus three. Um, a lot of damage on the U.S. map. Storm is going to be taken out by Sylvanas. Sylvanas goes out. U.S. maps is right in the middle of a lot of damage. Is going to try and move out of here. There is the stun. U.S. map goes back in and does get the kill onto Sylvanas. Um, Shogal looking to go ahead. Got down to... Oh, my goodness. I was wondering. I could see the poison. It was ticking every now and again. That ends up being an advantage for Region of Phoenix. They do have two kills to just one. Coming out of two heroes, one fountain. Oh yeah, probably isn't bad. It's just, it's not one of the healers I usually see. Coupled with Cho'Gal. But quite fair when the burb. We're gonna have uh, Sylvanas back here doing this all by herself. This is actually four versus three. They need to be careful. Chogal does not necessarily have the damage to actually kill anyone without some sort of help. But speaking of some sort of help, no, never mind. Sylvanas is moving up here. Going to tap and then go ahead and uh, harass US maps. Level 10s are online on the side of Regen Phoenix. We do go in and get the Hammer of Twilight, Wailing Arrow, Twisting Nether, Kill on Malfiel, Bunker Drop, and Blink Heal. Oh, we do now have a Leap coming out of the other side. Malfiel uh, is going to take Last Rites, uh, Twilight Dream, Mosh Pit, and Riptire. Keep in mind, although you can uh, mosh Cho, Gaul is immune to it. Alright. Brightwing is down here. There's a big old Riptar coming through. Goes ahead and gives some damage to uh, Blaze. Brightwing being the first one. Actually teleported in and got just taken out. Uh, US Maps in the back line is being body blocked by Cho. We do have a kill on US Maps. It's one for one. Um, Arya is moving back trying to get this. Lude Pandas goes in. We do have a kill on to um, Sylvanas. But another one on to the Malthil. It is one for one. But we do go in at a very, very low Cho goal moving out of this, this area. And they do get it. We do go ahead and have Dwarven Ram Riders charging up. Hey, you guys were in prison for a long time. You didn't get food. You're malnourished. You need to poop. Too bad. Get on the ramps. We got we got places to go. Charge. I'm so hungry. Yeah, John, that's what I said. Oh my god, listen to me.
Oh, we have a ball field. I'm looking at the wrong part of the battlefield, obviously. So would you go and have the bottom keep being taken out? Sylvanas moving in. Obviously, Sylvanas and Cho is going to be just the absolute dec decimation. Northern Touch is in the area. The rest of the team is not, so I'm not sure how much Northern can actually do. Oh, nice Molten Core coming out. That is the name of the talent, right? I don't know why I just clicked on Cho Gall. Molten Block. Okay, I was close. Has anybody really said Molten Core? I'm like, that sounds like a Ragnaros ability. There goes the stun onto Cho and also Gall. Derry Bow very, very low. Sylvanas is going to get out of here with uh, barely any health. But no, we do have Sonya goes ahead and puts a big old spear into her back. Yeah, so yeah, so just kill told so that kill flame your opponents in lol because that's not okay We are six kills to six kills and we do get a stack on two last rights as the choke all goes down up to two stacks overall So we're going to go ahead and have uh, what, two fountains, or two heroes, one fountain, pick up the bottom boss. So they rotate immediately north to get this one. It does look like dropping BB is going to hearth back. Dropping BB. And yeah, it does look like the place just to swipe both bosses. You're like, you've got to respond to bottom, and while you're responding to bottom, we're going top. Gotta make this more exciting. Dun, 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 dun. Speed archaeology. Congratulations to you for being awesome if you got that reference. Is there any reason for this camera work? Not really, but there's no battling happening on the map right now, so there we go. We do have the bottom keep was taken. They cleared out the bottom boss. They said, we're just going to move forward and go ahead and take this while you're not around. And while Rock is playing with the camera. They actually paid me to make sure that no one would tell anyone what was going on. So they are going to move up here and go ahead and take out this boss. Now this is going to be... Permanent um, steady catapult pressure coming across the bottom lane. But here's the thing. The boss can handle one lane without a problem. If they don't have to go back to defend it, it will clear out the wave and heal before the next wave gets there. All right, there's the moving on to Cho'Gall. Cho'Gall taking a lot of damage. Does get booped on back, trying to survive. Not going to be able to. Does go ahead and um, Molten Block, but is going to be taken out very, very quickly. There is the Last Rice. Last Rice does almost nothing to Blaze. Dari Bo goes ahead and goes out, and it's going to be taken out by the post. That is a four-man uh, team, almost wipe, coming out of one fountain. They said, you may have our bottom fort exposed, but we're going to go ahead and get some gut. We're going to get orcs on wolves. We're going to ride across the map. We're going to F up your sh- I almost got in trouble. I'm supposed to be relatively PG-13. I was even talking about this before the game, how I'm really, really good at a professional on cast. And then I almost drop an F-bomb and an S-bomb in the same set. skill me. Chogal is back, but not yet right wing or Sylvie. All right, they are looking at Chogal. Chogal going to get easily get out of here. Because Maps goes in and takes a cannonball to the face. To the face? You know, it does look like the majority of the aggression coming out of um, two heroes is here in the middle lane. They do go ahead and just smash through that wall. Or be a win condition along the middle lane. Although typically on this map you do need to take out two keeps before you can really try and go in and win. So 
we have to go to the bottom lane. They actually don't really lose any. It's funny, the Wolf Riders didn't get a lot of value, although they got quite a bit before the Wolf Riders showed up. Oh, I can't, I, I couldn't possibly have dirty casting. I'm squeaky clean, don't you know? Don't you know? All right, there is the stun coming out on Chogall. Once again, uh, BB comes in. They go ahead and move around. Nice boop away before that explodes. There is the move in from Brightwing. Polymorph comes down onto the ETC, stopping the silence. A bunker committed may be a little bit unnecessary. We do have a lot of R's pressed that weren't necessarily needed. We do have um, three of them down. Only Sonya down on the side of um, two heroes. Unstoppable comes out of the blaze, does not have bunker to drop. A lot of damage coming out, and we are going to go out of blaze, taken out by the Sonya. Uh, a lot of damage onto Cho Gall, not yet committing the last rites. Uh, I'm not really sure I can do Midwest uh, casting. I can do a little bit of a southern accent. I did grow up in Oklahoma, which is technically Midwest, but uh, this is the accent I picked up. And I don't really think this sounds Midwest, but don't tell me if I'm wrong. We do go and have the boss being picked up down here in the bottom lane. Um, we do go and have Northern Touch moving in. Uh, the other team is going to be here in the middle. Going ahead and take it out yet another uh, fort. We're going to go ahead and get that taken out. Moving up north, they do go ahead and uh, scout out their opponent's camp. Do see nothing's there, but they go ahead and decide, I'm just going to run mosey up to the top lane, see if I can get that taken out. Meanwhile, it does look like Lude Panda going to go over here and go ahead and pick up these here uh, knights. Get these out of here so that we can get another orc and another wolf. Orcs on wolf is all of the shiz Nate. I'm going to stop now before my like, mouth gets stuck that way. You're going to have the boss being uh, fought down here by the uh, region Phoenix. Alright, they do leave that. They say, okay, we've done enough damage. The towers will finish it off. I'm going to move over here. They have 12 seconds to contest this. Chogal is running in. The rest of the team is not actually following up at the moment. That's a bit of a problem. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Um, we do go to Molten being taken out. Chokal does go ahead and use the Molten Block. There's the stun. Chokal very, very low, but there comes the Zian from the right wing. I'm going to make sure this doesn't happen. The bunker actually body blocking very, very well, even though it's not a body. That is a double kill, but they do get the Wolf Riders, and the Wolf Riders are mounting up. Balthiel lets out a cry of... Fun. Um, and moves across the battlefield. I don't know if you could hear that. I think my noise gate may have actually stopped that. It does control when my voice gets too, too, too deep. Running up here, doing her absolute best, being like, I'm gonna stop you, little orc! Nobody hits my towers! That's not really what Brightwing sounds like. It would be more like, you know, like, You're a bad man! Bad, bad, bad! I may have played a little bit too much Brightwing. To go ahead and get this taken out um, in the bottom lane. Chokal is moving through, going to go ahead and pick up this health globe. Because it's healthy. Meanwhile, we do go ahead and have two heroes, one fountain, moving up to the top, top of the map. We go ahead and take all of this out.
All right, we do have the Knolls being taken out in the middle of the map right now. Both teams sitting at um, keep wall. The top port is up on the side of Two Heroes, One Fountain. Meanwhile, the bottom keep is down for the same team. No, Brightwing is not the Dark Lady. That's Sylvanas. Looks like we're going to have another prison camp to knock down. <laughs> it only hurts until you die. I also like the Brightwing voice. It's amazing. Alright, both teams are up. It does look like they're considering getting the Null Camp before they move in. They sent Cho'Gall up to go in and sit and bouncing orbs across to delay, but it wasn't quite successful. So they come down here and clear this so they can go in. They've got 40 seconds to actually pick it up. And their opponents will have to respond to the Nulls at some point. I do like moving over and engaging from the side, but it looks like Junkrat already has a trap over there, just in case. All right, a lot of damage. We know Mulligan being taken out first and foremost. There is the um, nice boop out. Uh, Polymorph comes down um, onto Northern Touch, goes in and cancels that out. US Maps takes a lot of damage. There is the stun. US Maps is caught in the middle of the slowing sands, except it's, it's slowing mud. It's caught, stuck in the muck. Northern Touch is in the middle of a lot of pain. Uh, Chokal is running in there. They have actually stopped the channel coming for their opponents. Northern Touch is down. They go ahead and sip on the healing fountains of the well. There's the jump in, and there we have Cho and Gaul being taken out. It's the last right. Actually by Sonya, but really it's the last right. We all know it. Knowles have gotten to the other side of the map, are pushing through. We do have a lewd panda once again returning because Malthiel cheats. And it looks like we will once again have wolf riders running across the um, battlefield, bringing death to the hated alliance. Dari Bow is indeed using a bow. Should get a proficiency bonus on attacks. A little bit of anti synergy there. It looks like uh, um, one of the R's was committed. But we didn't actually have Twilight Hammer up, so wasn't really, really, really super useful. Looking up at the top of the screen and looking at um, our cooldowns is tight. Alright, it does look like the bottom most one, so it'll take us time to get through here. We do go ahead and have the middle fort saved for the time being. At least saved from the wolf rider, but the top one is already getting aggressed upon. Very, very, very healthy, and Dari Bow is up here. Let's go ahead and knock that through so both sides have one keep down. Alright, Northern Touch almost yet does go in and get taken out by Cho'Gall. Um, there is the Death Watch. Does go ahead and make Sylvanas do a dance. Sylvanas dance? Because she can dance if she wants to. She can leave her mortal coil behind. So this should be a boss coming through the bottom lane. Now here's the thing, the boss will not end by itself. It may end with a push. Uh, Sylvanas is down for another 39 seconds.
if this is a race, it's a race that I believe um, Region Phoenix should win. And that's the thing, with 40% um, damage reduction, the boss cannot kill the core. And they are pushing in, they know that. All right, here we have the damage on the boss. They're moving in, there's being like, no, you have to come in and fight us. There's the polymorph coming out. We do go and have the other side coming in as well. There is a great mosh, but it instantly polymorphed in order to stop that. There's Suns, US Maps takes a lot of damage. US Maps is down. The, um, we do have both ball and someone going down. That is very, very, very bad for the long-term health prospects. Um, we do have a lot of damage on the score. ETC also goes down. There is the death mosh, making Cho Gall do a little dance. But there goes the captain, and we do go ahead and have game number two going inside of Region Phoenix. We have a rubber ass. We have game number three. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Although, actually, don't go anywhere because I'm not finished talking yet. Jump in the line. Rock your body in time. Okay, I believe you. We do have Gaul leading the damage charts, coming out with 67,000. Uh, we do have Daribo coming out with 54,000. Um, massive healing coming out of dropping BB. You do have uh, Blaze leading the soak race by a lot. Uh, 22,000 versus 18,000 from the Malfiel. Talents, we got those. Here they are. Look at them. Oogle them. Love them. Use them. We do go ahead and have Malfiel going for Die Alone. Cold Hand. A lot of Soul Rip collection. Um, obviously that. Oh my, Arrow? Spoilers! We have Fury's Blow, a uh, slam build coming out of Sonya. And I'll be right back before Arrow goes ahead and spoils anything else for you guys. And when you sink deep, breathing in ice, you feel the big sleep, the call of the night, but it's not time. So wake up. Square dance on the back of your skull. 
Hello everyone, welcome to game number three. We are going to go ahead and be on Sky Temple, the great greatest map in Heroes of the Storm where you win by avoiding your opponents. Get pumped. Oh, hi Katie. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think it's going to be ban being banned? Oh, Johanna, you're so smart. My cat is really going to be like... <laughs> Sylvanas is banned out. That surprises me. And, and, there you go. Look at you, cat. You know everything. Alright, we do have the Johanna Bang Meta as well as the Sylvanas. Sylvanas actually surprises me. I didn't think we'd have a Sylv ban. Um, not that Sylvanas is bad, I just didn't think she was that impactful. Hey! Don't whap me with your tail. No tail whapping. Oh, we're gonna have Sonya. Oh! Uh, being a horde. Because we're not gonna have any Sonya in this game. Uh, we do go in and also get the Stukov band out. They still do not like the Stukov. They said Stukov was entirely too good at securing kills. We don't like it. We don't want it. We don't need it. Get it out of here. Are right, there those Bright Brightwing coming out of dropping BB? Uh, just go ahead and say, you know what? Brightwing was really effective. Brightwing kind of doubles as a Stukov. Like, not as good as Stukov, but it's still, after an engagement, I can make you not able to press your buttons. And also lower your armor. I will fight to my last breath. Legion Phoenix cannot be going for... I wonder if they're trying to force out a Morales ban. Because you, you are not going to go um, choose pirates on this map. I wonder if they've unlocked the new secret tech of Medivh pirates. We do have a new Barak and Li Ming. A new Barak is a decent counter to choose pirates. Can't go in and cocoon out the Tyrael whenever he tries to do that. I do have to wonder though about the Morales ban. The fall steady is removed. And that they're definitely indicating Jews pirates. Because fall steady can fly back very quickly. Um and also like wind tunnel off of the core. Well look at look at Mulby just like uh claiming that he would get to be the Cho and be like, be, get to like decide where we go. Do I look like I'm gonna meekly be leashed and follow people around? Besides, Rockby88 is a much, much better name. To go ahead and have uh, Dub Z come out of the Grey Maid. And hey, 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 hey. Uh, wind up, bird. Wake up, wake up, wake up. We do have a Nazebo coming out. Are we ready for the Morales? Because I'm telling you, this looks a thousand percent like juice. I serve. Now that's a great, great, great uh, pick. If you do suspect Juice Pirates, because you can void prison the core and just, or whatever building they're going for. Hit. No. <laughs> Let the games begin. 
each they are actually going the Medivh version of this. For those of you that don't know, Medivh just kind of portals straight past the wall and they go straight for the building. Now they don't have Sylvanas, um, so that's going to hurt a little bit, but uh, Tiro can kind of keep them alive and Nazebo can put down a zombie wall. Um, that's really about it. You can also go ahead and portal back out. Oh, but here's the thing, Harkin. My in-game name is Raka. So it's, uh... Rockby. Oh, you don't have an 88? Well, how am I even supposed to know who you are, then? Oh, dear. Let me go in-game. My cat's hit something. There we go. Fix that. And then we also get the prediction up. All right, here we go into the actual game. Enough talking about, like, hypothetical couples' names. Uh, we do go ahead and get um, Arya coming out on the Nazebo. Recycchik is going to be on the Rhaegar. Arrow is on the uh, Tyrael. We do have um, Grey Main coming out of Dub C, and then Daribo on the Medivh. This is your Regen Phoenix. We, winners of the last game trying to go ahead and make this a twofer. But trying to stop them, come back with a game in number three, number win, and a repeat of the first game. We have Northern Touch on a Nubarak, dropping BB on the Brightwing. We do have US maps coming out on the Deheka. We do have Storm on the Invisible Zeratul. Loon Panda is going to be on the uh, Leeming. I don't know about Rockaby, actually. Uh, Rockaby sounds like we're putting a baby to sleep. All right, there is the Protect coming out quite a bit. It does look like this is going to be a lot of kills, and they do not actually get the fort. So that is exactly how Juice Pirate starts up. And here's the thing. A new Brock does a very good job of counter-pushing. Um, can just drop a lot of little beetles in order to draw the firepower. They can't go past the wall, but you know what? It may not matter. Here comes a, the response coming from the other side. Break on through to the other side. Go ahead and have the uh, the Haka double soaking. I haven't even looked at talents yet because I'm bad. Uh, we do go ahead and have one stack on Arcane Rift. Apparently dying did kind of reset that for some reason. We do go ahead and get Thing of the Deep coming out of Nazebo. Up to 10 stacks so far. No stacking talents on the side of uh, Fountain. Up to level 4 already. Two level advantage for the time being for uh, Fountain. Although that does shrink very quickly. Here's Daria Bow going back and forth. A lot of damage. There's a big... Oh my gosh! It's knocked down to like... I think I saw 50 there. Yeah, Daria Bow says, I'm getting the heck out of here for sure. Yeah, what you gonna do? I'm in the sky. I'm a freaking bird. I do have um, Arya and Daribo up here. We do go and have again. They are pushing into the top. Um, they don't have Medivh, so they can't just bypass the wall. But you know what? They may not care. Storm goes ahead and gets bit on the face. Face biting. Here is Daribo. Um, does not have a lot of health, though, and does not want to get a stack reset. So only at four stacks, so it would not be the end of the world. As we know it. At a level lead right now for two fountains. They have gone ahead and taken the top one. Uh, that's kind of why they pushed through this. They really, really want to get something down. I'm a bit surprised that we don't actually have two fountains um, trying to contest top. Because it's very, very clear what the battle strategy for Phoenix actually is.
Haha, <laughs> Seer Tool? You can't get me up behind my wall? Wait. Okay, apparently you can teleport, you cheat. That's what that's what uh, Zinzio was just saying. I can hear him. I can hear him. The magic of the temple sleeps until I choose otherwise. Alright, we do go on the camps being picked up. Both teams level 8 currently, but it does look like two heroes going to hit number 9 momentarily. I actually thought it would happen when they picked this up. Okay, there, finally went. Quoth Medivh? Are six stacks? That's the problem. They're actually just trying to soak and avoid the other team, which means Medivh's damage output is a little bit uh, limited. So yeah, I actually just looked because I wasn't 100%. So yeah, when this it hits 40, it, it has a one second cooldown as opposed to a two second cooldown. I'm like, I guess that actually doesn't help your building damage all that much. Now that I think it. I love that hearth animation so much. Uh, here comes the entire U.S. Calvary. Uh, we do go and have. Oh, I you actually can't burrow under that. I am. I I did not know that. There is ult out for both teams. You know what? Yet yeah, you can freeze them, but that's okay. They don't mind being frozen because they are up here ready to take down your stuff. All right, slip through. Slip, guys. Portal. 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 Like, your, your strat has one pair of legs on it. At one point, actually, um, I realized that I'm, I've got, I've kind of, like, forgotten to cast the game, but whoopsie. Uh, we do go ahead. But, uh, when I was on Yavapai, we did talk about running this comp, but actually, like, Having Tyrael go Judgment, having Sonya go, um, like, Leap, and running it as a pick comp instead of a Juice Pirates comp. You could have, like, a, uh, Vala or a Rainer, but actually go, you know, Morales would go for, uh, Stem. Speaking of team fight, here we go. We have a lot of damage going in there. Uh, there was the invisible, uh, invisibility coming from Brightwing trying to keep people alive. They are going in sub uh, Junk, or, eh. Raymond having to fall back, and they are going to be behind here. The boss is abandoned. Twenty-five stacks for Arcane Rift. A lot of damage on the storm. Storm goes ahead and runs away. Like a little baby. Garibo is, is, Garibo is being the Tyrannic Helicopter right now. And here above the siege camp, I do go ahead and see the uh, orange team moving through. Going ahead and picking this up. Can you 
imagine if there weren't observer spots in Heroes of the Storm and you just had to like basically play Medivh and fly around the map? Yes. My magic flows through the temples. Guardian. I have lots of good ideas. I do really like the way that um, Two Heroes One Fountain is playing this. They're just like, okay, we know that their only real win condition is to like get around us. So just run and keep an eye on them. Leaving Brightwing down below so Brightwing can come in if a fight does break out. But Nazebo is having to go back and deal with this. There is the Leyla. Oh, four person Leyline seal? Northern Touch, like a lot of damage, is being the kill target. But he's gonna fall back. Medivh up to 31 stacks right now. We do go and have the camping aggressive on right now. They are moving in. Northern Touch is about to have health. There is a stun coming out to the material. US Maps is leading in here. Uh, there is the Bloodlust coming out. US Maps are get a lot of damage. Not gonna be able to get out of here. We do go and have dinosaur burgers for breakfast. Or dinner. It depends on what time it is for you guys. Here's Storm is a global game, so I do not, do not, do not know. Do not know, do not know. Someone says, oh yeah, we should probably finish the camp. Or the zone. We do go ahead and have, actually, this has been taken out. And they are moving up to the core right now. Oh, Medivh gets his tax. I think he was at like 35 or 36. That was not a triumph. I'm not making a note here. This is not a success. It's hard to overstate my disappointment. All right. We're going to have boss posture coming out. Now Medivh is back, although it's all the way back at zero stacks. The town of Springfield, he's about to hit a chestnut tree. Oh, I'm doing US maps moving back and forth. Kitty. Oh, here's a lot. We do have a, um, we do go ahead and have a, the, oh, great, great, great. Daribo comes in with a great ley line seal, but there is the void prison landing, catching three people. They're looking for a tongue. They're looking for someone to not allow to leave. There's the invulnerable coming out. Um, does go ahead and use that in order to stop that. We do go ahead and have the um, bloodless coming out, but boom, 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 boom. There are three people down. I want you in my room. Boom, boom, boom. Really? I had not heard about that, Mulby. New information for me, for sure. We do go ahead and have quite a bit of damage coming across. Uh, Dari Bo going ahead and using his very, very, very slow wave clear to try and take out these catapults. Meanwhile, boss is being uh, taken up by Two Heroes One Fountain. Loon Panda goes ahead and gets knocked forward, has to teleport to avoid the boss stun. All right, here we have everyone else kind of moving through. Lude Panda is moving down, as is Storm, dropping BB in Northern Touch. They are looking to go ahead and move through the bottom. They go ahead and say, okay, we'll go ahead and take the bottom fort. They do send Haka up top, get lasers going in while your opponents have to deal with this big heckin' um, non-bandaged spider. If you look at the spider on Tomb of the Spider Queen, it's got a big old bandage butt because someone already kicked it, but this one is at full health, full power, and scuttling on forward. But no, is this, is this really the, if this is your plan? They're going for it. We do go ahead and have um, Hearthback. They're even dropping BB down here. 
can teleport in later, obviously. There is the Bloodlust, a lot of damage coming through. Trying to go in, they chase Northern Touch back, and they are on core. Uh, the boss is on their own core. Invulnerable comes down, but there is the Void Prison to go ahead and stop that from happening. I don't see this happening. Zeratul is such a good counter to this. Uh, there's a lot of suns coming out. Protection comes out one more time. Arrow goes down. The Zebo goes down. The Dari Bo goes ahead and gets explodified. Dub C, can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it? You cannot. We do get down to 54%, uh, but that's going to be GG. As game number three and the series goes to the side of two heroes, one fountain. Okay, you guys were supposed to actually end there. Stupid minions. The blue team's core is being assaulted. I like salt. All right, Tyrael's back. Can you do it, Tyrael? Can you save the world? Oh, not this time. Only from Diablo, not from physics. All right, with that being said, we are going to go into game, or not, we're going to go into the post-game summary. Oh my goodness, wrong screen. Whoopsie. So let me go ahead and see if I can get you guys a wonderful interview. One moment. All right, we'll see if anyone jumps into the lobby to spend some nice quality time with me. Obviously, if they don't want to, they're not required. You are never required to do an interview, but I have a feeling they will. I got a feeling. What? While we go ahead and uh, wait for them, let me, let me look at these stats at the end. We do go and have 37,000 damage coming out of both the Leeming and the Zeratul. Raymin coming in the next highest, coming out with 25,000. Tahaka um, in fourth. In terms of that ever-important soak, we do have 15,000, 11,000. And in terms of healing, we do have Brightwing leading the way 53,000. Again, I don't like comparing uh, heroes' uh, healing numbers one-to-one. -one. It doesn't really count for all that much. Um, you know, like, different healers do different amounts. It makes it seem like Rosai Chick didn't do as good a job as dropping BB, which isn't necessarily true. But I also don't want to just ignore the healers. Like, that seems rude. Um, still no one here just yet. Makes me sad. Hello. There sad. we go. Ah, oh, guys, don't scare me. <laughs> we're, we're older, so we're a little slower. Yes. If I run out of stuff, I'm just like start trying to sign off, and I'm like, but I don't want to sign off. But first of all, let, very let, much congratulations. Let's go. 24 hour stream right now. I'm coming close to that. Okay, I'm not coming close to that, but I'm I am streaming a triple header on Tuesday. But are you streaming our game on Thursday? You're playing Wednesday? Death and Delay. Death and Delay on Thursday, I believe. March 3rd. I'm so confused. Anyway, um, we do go ahead and have... Uh, that was a great, 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 great series. Um, very, very back and forth. Obviously, I, I need to start with game number three. How early in the draft did you start considering Juice Pirates? For, uh, after their first two picks. That's, I mean, that's the same thing I thought. As soon as I saw that Tyrael come out first, I was thinking about it. But then you guys didn't really seem to respond to it until the Zeratul picked, so I wasn't sure. Yeah, I mean, if they had gotten far enough along in the draft, uh, we had seen something with a hammer with kind of a, a same comp that they were running. And to be honest, we felt like we could gamble with Juice Pirates and just get rid of the hammer because we didn't want to deal with it. That is, you ban hammer on the third ban every single game? Is that just a general, like, this hero is annoying? Because I I almost never see a hammer, and then the one time I might be able to cast one, you're like, no! Well, Northern did it some scouting and saw that they had been running a lot of comps with hammers, so we just didn't want to have to adjust what we, what we were doing to deal with it. So, easier to get rid of it. But, 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 but... <laughs> 
there's always next week. That is a fun team who plays some fun stuff, so I would fully expect it to see it. So going back to game number one on Volskaya. Um, so Volskaya was certainly certainly interesting and very, probably the most back and forth of the games. Um, what was your strategy going in there? And I don't want to say why did it work so well, but was there anything specific to counter or was it just a we got comfort picks and we played the way we normally do? Um, I don't necessarily think we had comfort picks. Um, we've got a pretty deep hero pool on everybody on our team. Uh, and we have people that can potentially switch roles. So, I, you know, I, honestly, I think we just had some dumb luck in some of the team fights. I mean, that's sometimes how it goes. It's a coin flip. And there were a lot of team fights that game. There certainly were. Um, so, we already talked about how quickly you sort of saw the comp coming out of game three. Did the choke all catch you as off guard as it did me? No, we had talked about the Chogal. Um, we weren't sure if they were going to do it or not. They did. Uh, I probably should have gone with Tychus or Leoric instead of the Malthale, because Malthale's kind of greedy and all in. Uh, I, it, I mean, it was definitely it was working out towards uh, up until the very end, and then we kind of got into a situation where we thought we could clear because we had two keeps up, and we failed to notice that Sylph had Merc Queen, so those minions were nice and large and that i think made all the difference and i think we kind of popped out of the core a little too far to try to engage uh when we should have probably stayed tight around the the core but yeah, i mean deep. they they played it they played it well i mean that chogal was very well played yeah i definitely felt your frustration when i kept on seeing last rights run into um Hardcore, whatever the it's not molten core that makes me mad because I want to call it molten core. You can call it whatever you want. We're I think it's like some sort of stasis or something. Oh, yeah, but you can call it whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel um, like the name of the talent is it's something core. I yeah, right. I I think I I only I actually really didn't try last riding him too often. Um, I think I got a couple off on the blaze. I think I got I, I was aiming for Sylvanas more a couple times. Um, you know they uh, they they ducked it once or twice i think so um it, yeah i mean it's a tough team to kind of pop a last rights onto uh with bunker and that so again they played they played it very well it was a it's a fun thing to play against we haven't seen too much choke all lately so it was interesting to me a little bit that in game three like okay so in game two when they had sylvanas you guys spread out the beginning so you could definitely see where they were but you didn't for game three you still responded very very quickly but seeing what you thought was Juice Pirates, I was a bit surprised you didn't have someone in all three lanes. Uh, yeah, we were... We kind of talked about it, and we just said, you know, we could probably run bot really fast, and we ran bot pretty fast. Uh, I think they got half the fort. Um, I mean, it was, half the fort, yeah. no wall, right? Yeah, it, yeah, they were kind of trapped back there, so I mean, it was... I mean, they got value. They got some good value out of it. But I think just doing that without Morales kind of leaves them open to just missing tons of experience and yeah. losing more structures than what they're gaining. Yeah, we had a big XP lead, I think, at the beginning, if I remember right. Yeah, at one point, it was two levels, although not for very long, because it was something like they had 90% through level two and you had 2% through level four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think... Nazebo kind of stabilized them uh, in that game three with the XP and just soaking, soaking, soaking. And then um, I think they went they went for a couple more tries, but they kind of they kind of backed off up until the very end there. Uh, and you know, it was fun. It was really ambitious of them to go for it, but I mean, hey, why not? I mean, they they came close. Yeah, core race is not too far off, huh? No, I I do think your core was at fifty four percent when you won, so. Yeah, they, I mean, they could have pulled it off. So why not? So last question I have, because um, I always ask this, where does the name um, Two Heroes, One Fountain come from? Maps, why don't you address this one? <laughs> no. the, the, this, is my, this is my bait MGS band for a, a game <laughs> question. You know where this comes from. <laughs> okay, I guess, so... Why did you choose to name your team that? 
big fans <laughs> of Heroes of the Storm. <laughs> yeah, we like the portrait. You know, the, the two heroes and one fountain. We like that portrait. That's yeah. the official answer. It, it, it's about community and sharing. <laughs> Well, I will go with that answer and not pursue it further. Um, are there any shout outs you want to give? Uh, a shout out to Northern for his uh, his scouting. It was off the charts this week. So, rest of the team. Uh, Danny and the Bronze Six Boys and Lupus and Shredded Wind. All right, fantastic. And you also want to shout out your opponents for being amazing opponents? I actually do. I just realized I had forgotten that. Yeah, so and stop speaking. Thanks for the cast too, by the way. Yes. Um, yeah. Big shout out to you for the cast. Uh, it's always fun to get cast by you. We love it. Uh, you've been doing a lot of our games for a couple of years now on different teams names, and uh, we always appreciate it. Uh, shout out to the other team as well. That was they were really fun to play against. Those were fun, enjoyable games. Uh, you know, we had. No hard feelings about losing that game, too, uh, because it was a really fun game. So I, I think they've got uh, they, they're going to they're going to do some shit in uh, Div A East, I think, with some of their stuff. Yeah, they've definitely got some gas in the tank and we'll be very, very interested to see where else they go with it. Yeah, that, that that's not a team I want to remotely see in the playoffs. That would be a team I would absolutely fear if, you know, we all end up in the playoffs. Well, I've got some bad news, because I'm sure you both will be. Uh, we'll look to avoid them, then. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, um, I'll let you go to the after party. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Absolutely. We're just going to be watching videos of our uh, two heroes in one fountain. <laughs> well, um, Cheers, Raka. Hello when you get to this point. And have a good one. You too. Take care. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. So um, there aren't any other NGS games happening right now. I will actually be back in about uh, 45 minutes. I am going to be casting... Oh, I just had this and then I lost it because I'm super, super good. Uh, I'll be casting I'm Not Trolling versus CM After Dark over on A West. However, in 15 minutes, Coffee with Syl is going to be getting Fountain Snipers and Maximum Thrust. I'm going to raid over there because even though she isn't doing anything yet, um, that's the next NGS cast. So just hang out there for a second and it'll be starting up probably in the next, you know, uh, 10 minutes or so.